Greetings, everyone. Pete here from Comic Book Geezers. Welcome to uh, one of the shows that we don't necessarily like to do. Uh, my co-host and cohort in crime, the Ninja Wild Bill, uh, on the other end of Hello, the Zoom comic line. comic book fans. Uh, today is a special, uh, I guess, a dedication to Joe Sinnott. It's a sad I wear day. My morning, I wear my hood of mourning for Joe. Uh, we met Joe Sinnott twice, and he was great, great person, wonderful artist, wonderful human being, and we're going to take a little time to dedicate and honor some of the great things he did in the world of comics. So That's right. I'm going to start off, we're going to show off Marvel Presents, Marvel Feature Presents, this is number 11, classic battle of the Hulk versus the Thing, it's a John Romita cover, but on the inside the art is Jim Starlin and inks by Joe Sinnott. And I got this signed by Joe. I had him sign on the inside. Uh, so just recently in our favorite Fantastic Four covers, this is issue 167, the final two-part story, Hulk versus the Thing uh, by Joe Sinnott. Artwork by Joe. We also did Thor. This is 237. And out of the five comics I gave Joe, he spent so much time flipping through this book. He loved every page of it, man. That was great. He spent a lot of time flipping through this book. And I got well, I mean, Joe told us his two favorite characters to draw was the Thing and Thor. I mean, right there. And, and yeah, he was just thumbing through that like, yeah. but, like he hadn't looked at it in decades. He also did horror comics. He, did, he worked on this cover. This is great, man. You know, so his diversity, you know, he's very yeah. complex. Yeah, is Bill frozen? Bill is frozen. So until Bill comes back in, I'll, uh, I'll pick it up from here. So one of the things that I think uh, made Joe like one of the, like one of the MVPs of Marvel Comics is that he basically took every artist that he worked with and brought the best out of them. So regardless of who the artist was, once they, everything got handed to Joe and he put his wonderful inks down, man, those pictures came to life. And uh, I will say, man, when I heard this morning that Joe passed away, I, I was really, really sad because it's like we, we've had, he was the first guy we interviewed when we started this channel and such a nice gentleman, such a warm and caring person who had such great stories to tell. Sorry, so we lost Bill, Bill's connection, whatever. So I'll kind of take it from here. And it was just, uh, he's coming back in. He's coming back in. Uh, but just such a wonderful person to sit and chat with. And it's funny, not even like two months ago. It was actually right at the beginning of this uh, whole coronavirus thing. Uh, you know, we, we had, Bill, I'm just kind of telling some stories here. We were set yeah. to go to a couple of local Comic Cons. And Joe is usually at these Comic Cons. And Bill and I were talking, and Bill Kirk and I were talking about how you know, Joe's getting really up there in age and we really hope that we get to see him this year because, you know, when we saw him the last time. He looked really, really frail. And, uh, and then when I got the news this morning, I was like, oh, man, you know, so it just like it almost feels like you lost someone, you know. Right. And uh, just such a talent, such a talent. And like I said, just so personable. I mean, you know, he he was telling war stories with us and talking about, you know, working with all the greats you know, Kirby and the, the Bushimas and, you know, all those folks and just talking about drawing, you know, the Spider-Man comic strip in the newspaper and all sorts of cool stuff. And just, um, he's going to be missed. He's going to be missed. You back with us? I am. Did I freeze when I was showing that Captain America? You didn't even 19? get, you, you didn't even get that far. Try, try and turn your camera on because your camera's off. So while Bill's getting those straight over there, I'm going to show a couple. We've shown these before, but they warrant another look. This classic run with Jack Kirby and Joe Sinnott on the Fantastic Four. I mean, these covers and the artwork on the inside are just absolutely spectacular. And it doesn't get much better in this. And like I said, I love Jack Kirby, but I love Jack Kirby the most when he worked with Joe Sinnott. There's just something about these covers that are just absolutely legendary. How you doing there, Bill? Not too good. No? Well, uh, well, I see you, but you don't see me, do you? No, I don't see you. All right. Well, why, why, why don't you talk about what you got there, at least? 
Well, I had Captain America 119 with him and John Romita. Well, it was John Romita cover, but he worked with uh, Gene Colan on the inside. And then a few issues later, 127, he works with Maurice Severin, Captain America. And then I was also it. I was also uh, pleasantly surprised that he was involved with John Bushima for Nova issues one, issues two, and issue thirteen. And I was going to show those to you, but with my technical difficulty, how the hell can I? It's becoming quite difficult. <laughs> <laughs> hey Bill, why don't you tell everybody tell everybody the story? Uh, so you and Joe were talking a couple bunch of years ago when we interviewed him. Ago. Yeah, when when we interviewed well, him, you guys were talking about the the old like uh, army or army or navy stories. He, you, you guys were both talking yeah. about submarines because your father was in the navy, and you guys Correct. were chatting for a while. He, once he found out that I told him my dad was in the navy, but my dad served in the late fifties, early sixties. Joe treated me like I was a navy veteran myself and i never served in the military and as soon as he found out that my dad was in the navy he took an interest in what i had to say to him like i was a, a navy brother and he even asked me the name of my dad's ship you know my dad served on the uss half beat number 352 it was a submarine my dad was a sonar man on a sub and then joe went off telling me about how he was in okinawa in World War II, and that he was with the CVs, the engineering construction outfit. He's like, I joined the Navy, and instead of putting me on a ship, they put me behind the steering wheel of a truck. That's what he said, you know, which was kind of funny, you know. He had a great sense of humor. And when we, that was the first time we met him in the fall of 2017. And about eight or nine months later, in the spring of 2018, we went to this other comic book con in new jersey and he was there and i brought five comics with me and i got him to sign them and that was great because when i went there he had a bodyguard big muscle jarhead guy and there that show we went to was on a friday afternoon and it started it started about what two in the afternoon right two o'clock yeah two o'clock yeah so when we went there it was like three o'clock and there was a line there were like three guys ahead of me waiting and I was waiting to get an autograph and you know say hi because I'd just seen him eight months ago I was hoping that he remembered Pete and I <laughs> so the jarhead says to me the bodyguard goes uh, Joe's gonna take a break he's not doing any autographs for right now so the guy was like putting his hand in front of me to let me know that I've been cut off you know to come back later like in 20 minutes or a half hour and I just stood there and then the guy kind of barked at me a little louder. He goes, hey, I just told you he's not signing autographs. And I said, I know. I'm not going to ask him to sign an autograph. But I can still talk to him, right? And then I, and the guy gave me a dirty look. And then I looked at Joe Sinnott and his son, Mark. And I said to Mark, I go, and you know my friend Dave Kime, don't you? And Joe piped up, hey, how's Dave doing? And that put the jarhead on a leash. You know, that was my way of saying, fuck you, shut up, leave me alone, you know? And it works. Just so everybody knows, Dave Kime is a longtime friend of Bill and I, uh, who actually who grew up in the same chief. town as, as, as the And ironically, scene. Dave was on a basketball team when he was in grade school or middle school, and Joe was the coach. Yeah. And Joe was telling us that Dave was a hell of a basketball player. He was the fastest guy on the team. So <laughs> it's always good to drop. The moral of the story is it's not what you know, it's who you know. That's right. And if you got someone breaking your balls, and you want to get through that screener, you drop a name to the, the contact person, which is exactly what I did. It's an old sales technique, right, Pete? Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> and it worked. It put the jarhead on a leash, you know. So he while you were it. while you were hopping back on and off, I, I I was telling everybody how, in my opinion anyway, and you may you may agree, that Joe Sinnott brought out the best in some of the greatest artists in Marvel Comics history. And that most of the guys that he worked with were at their absolute best when they were side by side with Joe Sinnott. Do you, do you agree oh, yeah. with that? Yeah, absolutely. He just made everybody look better, yeah. you know? So, I mean, he had, a, he had, even when you looked at his prints that he was selling, the yeah, I detail. Got, I, I, got, I got one up on my wall. I mean, you know, and, and just, you know, and not an arrogant bone in his body for the talent, yeah. the artistic talent that he had. 
he definitely didn't act like a rock and roll singer now did he <laughs> no no and, and i tell you it's i think what makes me sad you know he lived a great long life um, yeah and i'm sure anybody who knew him really well will say that but what what's really sad for me is that you know we're going to go to these comic cons at some point when everything reopens and we're going to expect to see joe sinnott there and joe's not going to be there yeah exactly yeah, we've gotten we've gotten kind of spoiled by that right for the last couple of years well he's part of that it, now is i don't know what artie Simmons is he still alive i don't artie? know that's a good question but i don't if, know if, artie if, if, if he's not then the whole dream team of those up four there. Are, are gone right jack my guess Kane. my guess is he is because I, I was talking to someone else today and they said that whole the whole team is now gone so i'm assuming he is yeah yeah that's what i was getting to that the, yeah. the whole dream team is gone yes yeah, stan and jack and joe and artie yep and uh i don't think you'll ever find another team like those four guys you know they're, they're gonna go down in history uh, you know they made their mark you know yeah <laughs> several times over look at how many books i have a couple books due to my tech i was going to show you ghost rider number 10 where he fights the hulk that's the that's the issue that didn't meet the deadline and it's it's a reprint oh on yeah, the inside yeah of the first appearance of ghost rider and it's from marvel spotlight number five he also i was also going to show you ghost ghost rider number 13 and i was going to wrap it up and end it with hulk 284 which is the first book joe signed where he signed the outside and i was like oh no because I wanted him to sign the inside. He was like, <laughs> he put like, he just wrote the letter J. I'm like, you know what? It's, go ahead and finish it, dude. Don't worry about it. Do the other four on the inside. But uh, I'm glad I got him to sign these comics for me. And, uh, you know, I was able to, I'm glad I was able to get through the uh, Pitbull Jarhead bodyguard. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, that's cool uh, you got those because I was planning on having him sign something of the next con we go to. And I'm not going to have that opportunity now. I would have. I would have, if I had known, I would have gotten him to sign Nova number one for me as well, because I was a big Nova fan when I was a teenager. I got the whole run. And uh, I, th I think what I would I have liked to have done with him anyway, is I really only would like one sign. And what I would, what I would have liked is to have had him sign like one of these great fantastic fours and I would put it in a frame. That's, that's, what oh, yeah. I would like. that's what I would have liked to have done. I might, I've, that Hulk he signed, I would like to frame that, but it's going to stay with the rest of my Hulk collection, you know, but yeah. it's a, uh, that's a great, nice yellow cover. And with his black pen ink at the bottom and it's got the Hulk, it's got the leader on the cover. It's got Captain America, Wasp, Iron Man, She-Hulk, Thor, uh, and a few other characters I can't see who are smaller. Um, one of them looks like the guy that's a sidekick to Thor. I can't tell, but I like it because it's a collage of different characters on the cover, you know? And yep. uh, so, I mean, he's truly uh, worth his weight in gold with with his pen when he starts drawing is it, phenomenal, you know? And yep. such a such a great <clears throat> spirit. What a great attitude he had, you know? He, he was so personable, you know? Yeah. And uh, yeah, he's sorely, he's sorely going to be missed by all comic fans. And, and the people in the industry that knew him as well. I'm sure they're going to miss him as well. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So, uh, Joe Sinnott left us at the age of 93 this morning. Uh, we're going to miss him quite a bit. And this bill and I especially will miss him quite a bit. I think, uh, he's been kind of like our guiding light in this channel for the last couple of years. And, um, and he, I'm sorry to cut you off Pete, but he also is the first mega comic book superstar that we were able to interview in our little, we were only two months old. Yep. Right. We started in July of 2017 and we met him in September, two months yep. later. Yep. He didn't charge us for the interview at all. He could have if he wanted to. And yep. he's he didn't give us a time limit either. He we he let us go as long as we wanted to with that, you know, which was yep. really cool. And then it was like the cherry on top was to meet him eight or nine months later. And he remembered me, you know. Yep. So that was cool, too, you know. So, so for all you guys watching, if you haven't seen that interview, please go search our playlist and go check that out. It was a very fun interview with, uh, it was actually Bill and Joe. I was behind the camera. So I was asking questions uh, while Bill and Joe were talking. So it actually it came out really good. So. Yeah, I was basically repeating them so Joe could hear what Pete yeah. was asking, you know. But yeah. I wish I had done my homework more before we met him. But we didn't know he was there until we got there that day. That was kind yeah, of a nice Spur surprise. of the moment. Yep, totally spur of the yeah. moment. Yeah, you know. 
but if I had known, I would have been able to do a little bit more homework, you know, and ask, I would have loved to have asked him what he thought about drawing Nova, you know, because I was a yeah. big fan of Nova. And I didn't know he did Ghost Rider until like last year when I started reading credits on some of the books. So, I mean, he had, I'm sure there's so many other characters you could think of. I know he did quite a few Captain Americas. He was yeah. obviously notorious for Thor and Fantastic Four, but to see his name pop up in some of those horror comics was a thrill also. So that he got around. He, he had a very uh, wide spectrum, his range of what he could draw. You know, yep. he had a lot of talent, you know, he had a wide spectrum there. So he it was, was cool one of too, especially guns. on some of those horror comics. I mean, I like what, uh, reading some of the ones that he did everything. He did the, he did the inks and he did uh, the art. So that's because yeah. he had very, you know, he's more known as an inker, but he, the guy could draw. I mean, he's just, yeah. uh, you know. In fact, when you go, when you go to the cons, if you had a chance, that's all he's selling is drawings, you know, mm -hmm. the stuff that he drew, he drew, you know. Yep. And the fact that he did the Spider-Man comic strip in the newspaper for over 20 years, it came out like in 1980 or 1979. Yep. That was a big deal when that came out in the newspapers back then, yep. you know? Yep. So he did that character comic strip for the newspapers for, that's a hell of a run for over, just over 20 years. You know, that's every, that's every day. Yeah. That's every day. Yeah. I'm sure he did them all in one day, you know? Yeah, that's, exactly. I don't just like the spider-man you're used to growing up with in the comic books you know yep yep exactly so, so anyway. joe we're gonna miss you but uh, i'm sure you're looking down at all of us thank you for the memories and all the great work you've done we will we will treasure these things we call comic books that you worked on for the rest of our lives and uh you will forever be among the immortals so uh, joe Sinnott, yes. rest in peace at age 93 uh i am pete for wild bill, bill. Saying thanks for being here and God bless Joe Sinnott and everything that you did for the world of comics and all these comic fans. We deeply appreciate you, Joe. God bless. God bless, Joe. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.